We're going to the waterfall. We're on our way up. Julie, give a thumbs up for the camera. We are hiking up the ridge and... <laughs> uh, let's see. I can't see the camera, uh, so I don't know if it's again. facing me or not. Um, Dad, say hi. Hi, we're on top of the... We're not on yeah, top yet. Top halfway we're to sitting the, on the grass. We're sitting in grass halfway to the ridge. It's a moose. Come on. Beautiful. There's the rain coming, if you can see it. I'm doing a full 60 degree turn on the tip of the ridge. Pretty awesome, right? I'm Julie Johnson. Uh, I'm from Edina, Minnesota, so a suburb of Minneapolis. Um, I'm majoring in psychology and environmental studies with emphasis in social sciences, so policy, yeah. econ stuff, yeah. So I'm pretty new to the world of environmentalism or like being interested and aware of it. Um, I think I probably took it for granted, um, the environment, and I also, it's, it's hard as an individual um, to see how you could possibly make a difference um, for the environment because um, it's any one action that you do doesn't feel like it's doing anything um, because you can't see the results and psychologically that's that's hard to deal with if you can't if you can't immediately get some sort of feedback it's hard to really be motivated to continue on so I don't think I took advantage of the ability to learn about it and understand it more and so I was kind of just, I had the privilege of ignoring it. I haven't been really involved with, like, conservation and preservation and that kind of thing until I got to college. Um, I actually became an environmental major because of a general education requirement that turned me into a passionate uh, tree hugger. <laughs> um, I fell in love with it because... It was it was relatable to everybody. It's the planet, you know. It's it's so important. And I I um, after that I took the intro class, um, and I decided that I didn't I couldn't possibly want to do anything else with my life than talk and help and learn and understand the environment. So I find I've always I've always loved nature growing up going backpacking as a family that kind of thing it's always been a very calming thing in my life um, I spend a lot of time here right now we're I'm in the natural lands which is on St. Olaf grounds and um, it's just it just brings me a lot of peace being in nature so I try to come out here a lot and um, so that's kind of the environmental piece of my academia I guess and um, I've always really really been interested in psychology as a field and um, I guess connecting the two of them, which is what conservation psychology does, is is really, really exciting to me, which is kind of how I was drawn into that. And um, it's a pretty new field, conservation psychology, and all it, really what it is studying is um, kind of understanding um, the disconnect between humans and um, the natural environment and how that um, affects like eco-friendly behavior and why there's some denial with with environmental practices and um, harm, and then using that information to understand that connection, reunite that connection, and then try to use it to motivate people to be more eco-friendly. And a huge part of that is um, a lot of my research has to do with um, nature being beneficial to well-being, uh, psychological well-being. 
And so there's, there's a lot of studies, some of them look like they're magic because of the results, but uh, it's basically that um, spending time in nature, nature exposure in general, um, can be very beneficial to your, like, to your well-being, your mental health, your physical health. Um, the data is pretty crazy. Um, so psychologically, motivating people is easiest when there's something that's going to impact them directly, so some sort of selfish motivation. And so if we can, can, if we can show people that being eco-friendly is, is, is something that's going to directly benefit them, then, then maybe they'll be more encouraged to, to be more eco-friendly. So that's kind of my approach to it, is understanding like, how do we get people more connected with this issue? How do we make it more direct instead of this abstract, huge problem? I think that another really important piece of that is education. And um, environmental education is something that I've always been really interested in. Um, because you have to start at a young age, you know. Um, education is so important, especially because um, you only realize how important it is after you've experienced it, and that's kind of um, a phenomenon that's really fascinating to me, and it's similar to nature exposure in that way, um, where it's, it's um, you don't, you can't really fully, I mean, you probably can't really fully appreciate it unless you've experienced it. And I want to help um, the younger generation get there. And um, whether that be in higher education or um, all the way through, I mean, all the way down to like K through 12 area. Um, I mean, you have to start somewhere and it, it should be as young as possible. And so I want to be as involved in that process as I can. I think, I mean, for me, it's a important, um, I think I spend a lot of time thinking about that disconnect between nature and humans and, and trying to understand it and fix it because I wasn't always aware of the connection. And now here we are, as of 2015. The day has finally come. The day that marks the last day before we go our separate ways. We have studied next to each other, tripped over ourselves while running the wild in gym class together, got the homecoming Friday off at school because of a chemical spill. Oh yeah. I'm just as frustrated with past Julie about it. Like, I understand, like, how you can be disconnected and learning more about it and being more aware has made me act in more eco-friendly ways, and I slip up to everyone does, but, like, I think what's interesting is that if, if I can show people the connection that, that naturally exists between humans and nature, and, and especially after learning all of the benefits of interacting with nature, it's, it's, I just want other people to experience that. And I've always wanted to help people. I used to want to be a doctor, and then I realized that I actually didn't want to be a doctor at all. I just wanted to help people. And, and I think this is the way that I can help people. And I think that that kind of drives me. I've gone to elementary schools in the area and um, like tried to teach them about the environment on a weekly basis through a club at Carleton College called Kids for Conservation. That's been really, really, really powerful. Potato. Uh, hydro. hydro, yeah, nice. Kyra, you have one? Oh, okay. Thor? Wind. Wind, nice. All right, and there's another one called, or one that's, one that's a type of energy that's better than coal or um, fracking and that kind of thing. A better kind is called geothermal energy. So you can do that with, with water from underneath or from soil underneath and it pumps in and, and that's an, an energy source that you guys might not have heard of. Sweet, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's cool. So we have a pretty cool project today. We're going to spend most of our time on it. We're going to use these sheets, these huge papers. You're each going to get one of these and you'll have, um, you pick a question that you're going to draw on here. And then, so I'll go over those in a second, but then I'm going to collect these at the end, and then they're going to be displayed here. Isn't that cool? You can go check it out with your families. Yeah? Some smiles? Yeah? So, you can, you can draw what does a community that cares about the environment look like? You can draw what do you imagine or hope the Earth will look like in 100 years, and then what can you do now to help protect the Earth? Who has some ideas for this one? Ella. Pick up litter, great, yeah. Jaden. Make littering a law. Make no littering a law? No, make littering a law. Oh, like 
No littering allowed. That's the law. It's a good one. Okay. Kyra, did you have something? Yeah, cut off some of the factories, like, to make no, like, not a lot of smoke out anymore. Yeah, yeah. Make it so that the factories are cleaner, maybe. That'd be cool. Or, you know, make a sign that says recycle, put it up on wherever. Awesome. I think that if we can teach the youngest generation about the issue and, and, and help them understand the importance, and when they grow up, maybe they'll be more likely to do something more systemic, like on a, on a societal level. Because right now we have so many people that, that stop us from doing that, that it's really difficult to do much, especially with the current administration. Um, there's a lot of ways that it's really difficult to do much on a systemic, like a system level. And so individual acts are, are crucial. I think that education is kind of where it starts, and I don't think that as a society, if, if we are not educated in, in what we need to be, we can't make change in that area. And I think that starting with young people is, is, is how that needs to happen, and I think that being able to shape the minds of students of any age is the most empowering thing. I think especially in upper, in higher education, of people who are potentially going into fields directly after being your student, going into fields of, of study that, in fields of work that will impact society as a whole. And I think that that is a powerful and sustainable way to spread environmental awareness. So education is important even beyond the classroom and um, I think that it happens on the, I mean on the streets in at work no matter if you're a teacher or not and um, a lot of people I mean through marches and through activism uh, lobbying policy She's got the whole world in her hands so cute and also just through conversation and um, I mean I Yes, I want to be a teacher, a professor, a researcher, an environmental speaker, um, and that's how I am starting conversations, but that's not the only way to do it. And I think it's important for everybody to be a part of the conversation, to just make it part of your every day. Talk about the environment, educate people around you, learn, make it a point to learn about the environment, learn about what you are passionate about so that you know how to talk about it with other people get involved with your community with marches, and I think it's important for everybody to be a part of the conversation. Water is life! 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 We need to deal with this now. Otherwise, you know, in 50 years, we're gonna have summers like current Kansas summers. Like, it's, it's, it's no longer an option. It needs to happen, and it needs to happen yesterday. <laughs> And I think that, I think that we're starting to realize that. I'm just one person trying to do my part. I think that this is an effort that's going to take everybody, literally. <laughs> so I just hope to contribute.